how did you become who you are today? And tell us about your struggle from the beginning and how you got here. Mm. Let's travel back to memory lane. <laughs> Uh, how we started, how it all started. Mm. These are some memories that I've succeeded in burying some because some of them I really don't want to remember them. And some have fizzled away with time. But I would say right from inception, right from the time I was growing up, I know there's something about something about how I feel or how I envision the future that was not that didn't sit right with so many people. Family, friends, I believe. So many people. I don't think I've ever received understanding from everyone around me. Maybe now, um, as I'm building up my cycle, I'm building it with people who genuinely care and understand. And my family, some of them, <laughs> are now respecting, I wouldn't say understanding, but I would say they respect my views and uh, people around me but back in the days well I was growing I grew up in Yobi and it's a place where I don't want to call it local <laughs> because I don't think it was local I would say a little bit backwards when it comes to civilization so I was really weird to so many people because I was so ambitious right from childhood I'm this person that wanted my own all the time um in school while i was in secondary school i was teaching some of our students some of our neighbors their kids like english and maths just to make a little peanut uh in the university i was lucky enough to get funding from my dad to start my business so i've always been that person that woman that stands out that wants things and commands respect whether you want to give me or not or must be heard <laughs> i've always been that person that you must hear me out even if i don't make sense i struggled with communication with people because what i'm saying is not what they're seeing or what they're hearing i struggled with my dad to be able to go to school because at that era or at that time girls are supposed to marry I, I mean after secondary school all my peers got married the moment we finished secondary school so, some married before we even finished secondary school so for him being who he was and what he represented in the society he wanted me to get married and he has promised um, his sister that I was gonna marry her son so it was just like a chaotic thing and then I am this person that was not ready to take it to whatever it is you say, I'm saying no. And he, back in the day, I would say things have changed now, but back in the day he was somewhat of a dictator. <laughs> when he says this is what I want, then everybody must follow. Then he gave birth to me. <laughs> a child who says no when they don't understand things i mean i need explanation i'm the kind of person that if i sit down in islamia and you say things that i don't understand i'll tell the malam no and please explain to me so i've always been viewed as difficult not because i was difficult i think it's because they didn't have answers or they don't know how to deal with someone like me so I fought my way through everything that I would say without a doubt and I would not stand here and tell you that someone supported me throughout my choices in life because my choices are viewed as taboo as a uh, being controversial and not because the people around me don't love me 
by the way not because they don't some of them i believe from the beginning my father saw who i am and he knows what i can become and because of the society he genuinely wanted to tame me <laughs> because he feels oh my god this person is going to bring us stress in our lives because we have to explain all her choices to people and i don't think he was ready for that my mom i would say she was somewhat um on the reserve side she got married very early she has no choices i would say in so many things at that time so i wouldn't really blame her for keeping quiet for how people treated me for what people said and i don't think there was a day she ever stood up for me in any way to say no don't say this about my child or something maybe now but at that time i would say no one understood me as far as i'm concerned so yeah i fought my way through everything through school through business every single time i want to be viewed as serious not by the way i look or from where i am or how i speak i just want people to see what i can do what i can offer so every single time i'm fighting someone to be able to attain something so simple something so easy that you, i made a chair it's so beautiful just buy it no you want to have a history of the fabric and this is not something you do to other people but because of where i'm from or how i look or the perception you have of our people you just put us in a category and say this is it so you have to fight hard Somebody once asked me a question saying, you look like someone that is trying to make a point or trying to prove something. I'm like, yeah, we have to prove something because you have to prove, you have to prove that you are worthy of even respect. You're worthy of, to, to, you're worthy to be heard. You're saying something, the same thing you're saying is what a man is saying, but nobody wants to hear yours. So yes, there's nothing easy. I did not get it easy. I cannot, some days I really can't sleep when those memories creep back in because it's hard to take all of it in alone because I don't think I share anything with anybody because after going through so much and uh, the closest people to you don't trust, believe or respect you for a very long time, it gets to you. So even when they start respecting and hearing, you have mixed feelings. You're like, okay, maybe they're doing that now because of this, because of that. Or so why didn't they do it when I was this and that? So it is a battle for a woman in Nigeria, I would say in the northern part of Nigeria, to stand strong and be heard no matter what, even if you would insult me. I will say my truth. So when i hear women say when i got divorced i cannot move on because of this i just see it as excuses to me because for me i stood by myself in a place where no one could lift you up because coming from the northeast you would know that not many women are like this not many women can withstand the backlashes of trying to be responsible and at the same time be successful so it is very difficult and it is doable it is almost 20 something years now of battling and i'm still battling with people to be heard to be respected to 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 see me for who i am to not look at other things that they think i am see me for who i am it takes time after years ages we might stand somewhere sometimes and say oh we're very strong we don't do this we don't do it's a lie we come home and we hear it all in our heads in our surrounding we look we see people look at us like that we know we're not dumb so yeah it takes energy it takes resilience it takes faith in god what i did in the in in, in the recent years is find my way to allah find my way to strengthen my relationship with him so every other thing is just nothing to me because now i realize it has nothing to do with people actually it has everything to do with god and why i'm here 
I decided to look into the purpose of me being here and tap into it. So I started, the start was really difficult. The middle is difficult, it's still difficult, but it softens with age, with years, things change, people change. And uh, when they see how much of a, of a strong person you are and not give up, people will come back. They will come back, come to track, they respect you, get all that you need. Your businesses will thrive. People would now buy without wanting to know how you did it or what you did to get it or so. So I would say I went through hell and back to sit here today and speak. So I don't look at anyone as the source of my inspiration apart from God because I really didn't have anyone to support me in my early um, struggle with success and whatever it is that I have achieved today I would only put God there and the customers that came to buy <laughs> and in other words it's still God that sent them and it's God that blessed my hands to do what I needed to do to be who I am today. So you don't need anybody. Like literally, I keep telling women, you don't need anyone to support you to be successful or to stand for your truth or to do the things that are right for you. Because in the end, it's just about you.